We'd now like to welcome on stage Guido Tozolin, Senior Manager Chassis Development at Aplus Idiata. His presentation will cover the chassis development of Mahindra's flagship seven-seat XUV700, done in collaboration with Idiata. Let's see together how the usage of a DIM 250 driving simulator allowed to shorten the overall development process by almost 12 months. Hello everybody and thanks for having me here today. It's a big pleasure to be on this stage again. Uh, today's presentation is about a dream come true for us because it's our first complete development program that we saw from the very early stages of the concept definition until SOP, and that's been developed around our driving simulator in Idiada in Spain. So this has, made, uh, has been made possible by our customer Mahindra, who should have been here today sharing the stage. Unfortunately, they didn't make it. But they believed in us in, as a partner to support them in developing the new product, the XUV 700 or 700, as they call it in India. So before diving into the presentation, let me uh, introduce very briefly our companies. Mahindra is one of the largest vehicle manufacturers in India. And they are part of a Mahindra group, which has presence with different technical centers and production sites in 50 or more than 50 different countries. They sell around 350,000 vehicles a year and they have a product line which is divided into passenger cars, commercial vehicles, and electric vehicles. Well, Idiada, maybe many of you know Idiada already, but we are uh, an engineering partner to the automotive industry. We provide a wide variety of different services. We have state-of-the-art testing facilities, among which our very famous proving ground in Spain, but also in China we have one, and of course, among them, different sort of simulators both in Spain and in China. We have a presence in 22 countries and we are around 2,600 professionals. So now let's talk about the project. The XUV700, it is uh, an old new seven-seater SUV. And it's, it's the flagship product of Mahindra, meaning it's the most expensive car and the one which is supposed to have the highest level of performance. It has been launched last August and its price starts from 16,000 euros, more or less, translated into euros. That means, of course, it's a product which is relatively expensive for the Indian market, but of course it's also a product which has to be engineered in a way which is very efficient and taking budget into account very, very much. And it features a front McPherson suspension and a rear multilink suspension with a longitudinal blade, which was the first uh, case uh, for Mahindra. So it's not a suspension they have developed before. And they had very, very ambitious targets for this program. So first of all, they wanted to have a radical improvement for the vehicle dynamics performance because their previous uh, proj proj uh, product in the same uh, range was the XUV500, and it was not really recognized in the market as being a, a, a leader for what concerns ride and handling and performance. The second aspect is they wanted to streamline the development process. So from the first benchmarking activities until SOP, we had around 30 months, including some heavy break for COVID that hit both us and India during the, the process. So we actually started the benchmarking activities back in October 2018. So that, and the final sign-off was done in March 2021. So relatively short time to develop such a new product and to have such high level of performance. At the same time, they also wanted to reduce the money they spent on physical development, because at the time they really were focusing very much on chassis tuning and they had to produce a lot of parts, finding out that the final outcome was not at the level they expected in terms of performance, even though they were relying on several different international partners. Okay, so all these very ambitious project objectives required us to uh, have a different approach or change very radically the way they were developing cars. So I would divide the key elements into three main portions. So the first thing is we really wanted to integrate very strongly the design uh, of the suspension to the functionality aspect. So this means a very strong integration between the CAE teams working on Adams model via carrier time models and 
the CAD engineers doing the actual design of the suspension. Even though they were located uh, uh, one in Europe, uh, the performance side, and one in India. The second aspect is that all the physical development had to occur on the actual physical roads in India in order to have a very good understanding of the market, of the different requirements that you have in the Indian market, different roads, etc. So our professional drivers spent a very long amount of time in India driving the cars as soon as they were, the prototypes were available. And finally, and this is a little bit the link among all these different things, we, dis we proposed them to put the driving simulator at the center of this development activity. That means that every single uh, component that was designed, and even before it was designed, just when it was conceived, it was previously tested on the simulator, taking as a basis the models that were used for offline simulations and providing feedback for the, to the design team to understand what part was working properly and what part was not working properly. So really everything uh, moved around the simulator and even the drivers that did the physical tuning of the prototypes were the same drivers that drove the DIM in Spain on our uh, facilities. So more into the details of how this has been done, uh, we have a quite generic vehicle dynamics process overview here where we start from targets uh, at subjective level, that we agree with the customer, we move on to vehicle objective targets, finally uh, KNC level targets or suspension targets, including also, of course also the performance from the tires and other components, and finally we define our chassis design and the specification of each and every component. This is what we need to do before we actually start building uh, for the first prototype. Typically this process is uh, supported by what we call the target setting, which relies on trying to make a correlation between subjective feeling and objective KPIs. We all know it's very, very difficult. Uh, second is the target cascading process of when we use high-level models such as carrier time, where we don't need to spend much time defining the fine details of the chassis or the components, but we would just define the overall performance of the chassis and see how this influence and integrates with the overall vehicle balance. And finally, through more detailed multi-body models, we define uh, and optimize the chassis into the fine details. Well, we decided that the simulator had to intervene not only on one of these phases, but really in all of them. And so we started using the simulator from the very beginning, also in the target setting uh, phase, and especially when defining the so-called target cascading. So this has been done uh, in a relatively reduced number of sessions in order to make the project sustainable for them. And so we spent around two sessions in the target cascading in different uh, phases. And then before the hard point freeze milestone, we had three additional sessions. And before the design freeze milestones, we had other three ses uh, sessions where all the things that were in the model at that point in time was directly coming from information received by the suppliers and the design team, so everything was quite mature in terms of design, and we were more into the validation of, of the design. So instead of going, uh, making it too um, the theoretical, I'd like to give you three relevant examples out of the many that activities we've done on the simulator. So the first example is about uh, the hard point freeze milestones and how we decided which hard points were the correct ones for the vehicle. So we had different candidates for the rear suspension in, and it was quite difficult based on offline simulation to really take a call on which was the most convenient or, or the better, the, the most balanced. So we decided to generate uh, carrier time models of each of these candidates and to do a, tu a quick tuning of each of them in uh, the driving simulator. The tuning was required to mature the concept enough so that we could take a good call among the different candidates. And finally, the evaluation was taken based on the evaluation of one of our expert drivers. Then later on, the same pe person tested the vehicle on the proving ground and confirmed the general vehicle attitude and behavior that we found in the simulator. So that means very fast decision-taking process, and at the same time also no need to build parts because we didn't need to change anything in, in this respect after the first prototype was, was tested. Another example, 
uh, steering system. So we had a steering system that very early in the project we that we detected was not very good in terms of stiffness. So we had quite a lot of steering compliance. And of course, the supplier required quite significant extra budget in order to improve the performance of the car. And this was a difficult call to take. As I said before, this is a vehicle which has to be produced at a relatively uh, low cost uh, for, uh, for mass production. So we need to um, basically take this, this call. And the way we did it was that we had the chance to have the head of product development in, in Spain. And we organized for him a dedicated session where we made him try different, uh, set, different sort of steering systems. One with the original uh, version of the, of the design and another one which was an improved configuration. So based on this session, finally, the decision was taken to spend this extra money on the component development and on the component in order to achieve a higher level of performance. And another example is about damper tuning. Damper tuning is something which, of course, takes a lot of time in the proving ground, and it's very difficult to get rid of this. So we tried at least to bring the dampers to a level of maturity which was as high as possible, considering the, the constraints. So the initially damper construction proposed was a little bit uh, uh, not optimal for us in terms of force velocity curves. And we saw that limitation relatively early on, just based on offline simulations. Uh, we wanted to clarify our targets to the supplier, and at the same time, to be able to validate their counter proposals and their designs. So this has been done again in two sessions on the DIM, one more dedicated to uh, target uh, setting uh, at component level, and the second session more based on actual feedback from the supplier in order to see within the workspace they were able to provide us whether or not we were able to meet our development targets. And the result is that we finalized a damper design that was used as a starting point for the tuning phase in the proving ground, and it cut down very much the actual development time we had to spend on this component. So let me try to make a summary of the results that we achieved and on the impact of the simulator on this, on this program. So this is a very difficult thing to measure very objectively, but we tried to make an estimate together with Mahindra of the time they were able to save and the amount of money they were able to save thanks to the driving simulator. So we made a comparison between the typical effort they used to put in the past for developing something similar uh, only through offline simulations and the level of maturity they were able to achieve before the vehicle was uh, actually tested. Okay, so in orange is the situation before we, we had this new approach with the driving simulator, while the green part is the contribution that we believe the simulator was able to provide during the program in terms of maturity of each and every component that was finally uh, signed off. Of course, there is still, for some components, quite a gray part we have to cover that is partially due to lack of information that we miss from some suppliers. We still have to refine our models, and also it's a little bit of a journey that we started to take with Mahindra, trying to improve this more and more in the future. But the impact overall was very big. They recognized that the vehicle was behaving quite correctly, uh, and, at a, and to reach the same level of performance, they had to invest 35% less time so that this means more time you can dedicate to refinement of the components. This is also very important. So it's not only reducing the time or reducing the cost, it's also that you, you gain extra budget to then spend money on refinement of, of the performance. And this was done at a relatively sh low number of driving simulator days. So we had 22 days on the DIM250, some other days on the compact. And in these 22 days, we were able to evaluate more than 450 setups, which is a very big number. But everything occurs very, very fast at the simulator, as you can imagine, especially in comparison with actual vehicle tuning. And this is a little bit the results in terms of actual market uh, uh, acceptance. So we had uh, an internal evaluation, a final sign-off for the car, where we drove the vehicle with Mahindra Stop Management in India. And you can see here the gap between the predecessor, the new vehicle, some European competitor with European components, etc. quite more expensive car, and some local competition. So we really believe we were able to make a big step 
uh, in comparison with uh, previous products. And I have to say that this has been recognized very clearly by the market. Uh, it, the car itself has been nominated the Indian Car of the Year 2021. And if you go to the Autocar website, which is one of the most important ones in India, and you scroll to the, drive, uh, to the right and handling section of, the, of their evaluation, it starts with this phrase which says, the biggest area of improvement over the XUV 500 is the dynamics. So that makes us quite happy and quite proud of what we have been able to achieve. And I would say that the driving simulator was absolutely a key component of this success. So some conclusions from my side. Uh, this for us is really the first example where we have a complete success story uh, on the simulator, just because we didn't have the simulator for long enough to have more, but we hope to have many more, of course, in the future. Uh, as I said, the simulator was really a key, and the customer recognized the added value of doing this development based on CAE and based with the simulator at the center. And we were not only able to optimize the budget, but also to optim and to increase very much the performance at the same time. And as you know, this can only be achieved with better technology. It cannot be achieved just by other means. But the next steps that we have now, uh, we are working on trying to get the tire development as well integrated in the simulator for the next development program we are making for together. And uh, the second aspect we are trying to work on, because Mahindra is getting into the EV market very strongly, it's uh, to have more support for X development using the simulator, especially developing dual motor uh, architecture for EVs. Thank you very much for your attention.